So, let us start with uh, what is uh, natural language processing. Uh, there will be a huge one particular course to course of introduction to natural language processing itself. So, I will try to introduce a few basic concepts needed to create an automated essay grading system. Okay? That is what we will talk in next video. I will introduce the concept needed for uh, understanding how to create a system to automatically grade an essay. So, let us talk about the first two concepts like lemma and stem. Okay? Lemma is uh, if we are given a, a word, we need to identify the um, like a root form or basic form. Okay? So, grouping the inflected form of words, for example, eating, eat, eat, so eating, uh, eat, past tense or eats, all this forms to a root word called eat, it is a verb called eat. The verb eat has been used as a eat, eat, uh, eating, eats, all these things. Like talking, talk, talks, talk, everything is a root word like talk. Right? So, this is a lemma. So, you have to find the uh, root word based on the group, uh, group those words based on that all the inflated form of these words are grouped into one particular form that is a lemma form. Uh, lemma is uh, in English it is easy because uh, the dictionary is there, a lot of people worked on that we have all the forms of uh, words extensions, words uh, inflated forms available. So, we have a huge dictionary. So, whenever the words comes, you just use the dictionary and to find the root word and copy and paste it. So, system is uh, well developed to do this. Uh, the simple thing in, uh, um, in lemma is we might lose the meaning, right? Um, so, we might lose the meaning of uh, uh, some, say, some words. So, in order to do that, they use some other called stemming. Stemming is uh, very simple rules, uh, there are set of logical rules applied. Uh, the rules like remove ing, remove ed or uh, so for example, remove, remove ing, remove ed, uh, remove s or something like that. So, a it will be eight only, eight will not be converted to eat. Okay? Uh, eat and ing is removed, eat, 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 talk, 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 okay? it is all that. So, remove ing, ed, ly, if the word ends with these suffixes, that will be stem. So, you will be like a, take the stem of this, not the extra suffixes, you will be removing it. That is the thousand uh, feet view of what is lemma and stemming. I am not talking about any uh, uh, mathematical forms or the algorithm behind it, but that is not needed. If you want to know more about it, if you find interesting uh, this particular week's uh, video, I request you to go and check the video called uh, Natural Language Processing Course by Professor Dan uh, Jalafsky uh, in a YouTube. Okay? Uh, it is available, available freely. If you like the course, you can also just join a course here. But they explain completely the natural language processing traditions, how these words are do. Uh, extracted and what is the information extractions, everything will be discussed in that particular course. It is an interesting course, check that out. So, since you saw what is lemma and stem in a basic form, I just want you to give a small activity. Uh, consider a sentence, walking is good for health, uh, but jogging is better than walking. Can you create a lemma, lemmatized form of this sentence, also stemmed sentences from this sentence, stemmed words from the sentences. So, pass this video. Uh, write down your answers, then resume the video to continue. So, lemmatized form is, uh, it is simple, right? We, we know lemma is root form. So, walking, the root form is walk. S is actually root form is B, okay? B, good for health, okay? Dot. Uh, but jog, jogging is gone, jog. Uh, B is, uh, can be uh, better, better is actually form of a good, good. Uh, then walk. Okay, this is lemmatized form. Stent form is a bit different. Walking s will not be uh, removed. It says good for health, but jog. Uh, it removes the jogging because you know jogging means there's a g, which means you have to remove not ing also g ing. Sometimes if you don't have that rule, it will have a jog g j o g g. That's it. S better. So that's a problem. You don't know how to remove the words. So bet then walk. So, that is a difference between lemma and stem, but you know other concept in NLP is very famous is called the n-gram. Uh, it is uh, it's basically uh, a unigram, bigram, trigram or n-gram. Given a word, it is very simple, it is uh, it's very simple. Given a word say, um, I like to drink coffee, something like that. So, if it is a unigram, I want to uh, create a dictionary with all the uh, single words in it. So, the dictionary will be unigram dictionary will be simple, unigram dictionary will be simple, I 
like to clink something like that. If by gram I want all the two words together in the dictionary like I like is the one word, like to is the other word, uh, to drink is the third word, third uh, combination of the bigram in my dictionary. Drink coffee is the one. If it is trigrams, I like to like to drink, to drink coffee, something comes in. So, uh, unigram, bigram is used for um, uh, applications like Google, I will tell you where exactly. But uh, let us see, um, let us see how this can be used. So, what is unigram bigram tells us like given a lot of words, lot of content exists in the world, you can go and crawl automatically, call all the content in Wikipedia, Wikipedia database available free, you can download and use it, uh, Google news database or something like that. Can we create a dictionary of uh, what is the combination of words occurring together, okay, that is the idea of bigram. Uh, trigram uh, it is not needed necessarily, but sometimes there is a word which is the three centers, computer science and engineering, okay. So, computer science, science and engineering is different, but computer science and engineering means there is a three words needed to get that word. It is not necessary, but let us see how it works. And uh, there is something called n-gram, it is something is beyond trigram, like a 4-gram or we do not know what is, I do not know what is exactly what 4-gram called. So, when you think is beyond uh, n-gram, we we'll call it as n-gram, 4-gram, 5-gram, 6-gram, something like that, okay. So, in this activity, uh, check this sentence, uh, learners engagement in class and the interaction with peer is uh, peer impacts the performance in the assessment, okay. The sentence may be not correct, but consider uh, learners engagement in the cl in class and the interaction with peer as imp uh, peer impacts the performance in the assessments, okay. Some sentence like this. Can you find out the unigram, bigram, trigram of this, not n-gram. Well, if you want to do it, just go for 4-gram, but uh, not beyond that. Can you find uh, this unigram, uh, bigram, trigram for this sentence? So, after you do it, uh, please assume the video to continue. So, the unigram will be uh, learners, uh, engagement, uh, class, I remove the n because, okay, and uh, their uh, interaction with per impact, all these things will be the unigram. Biogram will be learners engagement, engagement uh, in, in class, class and under, okay, everything will be a biogram. So, trigram will be learners engagement in, um, learners engagement in, uh, in and uh, engagement in class, in class and class and the, so we are actually moving, okay, that is actually uh, not shifting the windows, like a sliding the window slowly. So, the window is sliding, so you can take the first three words, next three words, next three words, it is like that. So, trigram is there and n-gram, it is actually a 4-gram. Okay, so four gram uh, dictionary can form. Why we are doing this? Uh, it's very important. Uh, I'll show you why we are doing it. It's very simple. Okay, let's see. So, if you want to know what uh, word will come next, when you ever wondered when you type in Google, you type the first word, it picks up and shows the second word. How the second word automatically appears? Uh, okay, in Google search engine is not just uh, NLP. It based on the context where you are from and uh, what is your personal profile, what kind of words you search already, there are a lot of uh, modeling of you happening in the search engine itself, right. But uh, the basic idea is that NLP is this. So, how does that tells you that the current word, okay, that is a Markov's assumption, okay. Um, I told about the hidden Markov model in last week, but uh, that is Markov assumption basically this. Uh, the current word depends on last, last word. So, I just go for the same example, I like to drink, okay. What is the probability of like occurring if the given word is I, you type the word I, okay. What is the probability of second word would be like? If you consider English dictionary, lot of sentences, the second word after I will be am okay, not like. Um, but maybe in sentences, if you have words most of I like, I want, that can also occur. So, that might have some, some probability. But probability of 2, given the current word like is high, right. So, 
if the current word is i, what is the probability the next word will be to mostly like like to uh, because mostly like follows with the two because that is how they all the sentences formed in the content like of newspapers, Wikipedia. So, from the content database you can construct this uh, probability of what is this uh, transition of the like to two. So, you remember the case transition we talked about we can create that kind of probability that is what exactly happening here. So, we are creating that um, to drink is not possible you know for example, probability of drink given to is not possible not, not high probability, but consider if I have a probability of uh, the previous word is 2 also the previous to previous word is like 2 ok. So, think about the sentences which has I like to go. I like to drink, I like to eat. So, now there are like to there are only certain form of things are coming though instead of two uh, lot of other words possible. Now, we have like a eat, drink, go all this thing. So, these words now we can have a better probability. So, what happens is if you have more uh, sentences given in the probability of previous sentence if you know about history like uh, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. Uh, you might be able to better predict it, but Markov's assumption says that it is not needed. And mostly uh, you will able to predict all this uh, previous sentences will be just by the previous uh, word only. You no need to give previous word n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. The Markov assumption says that there is no need to do that. Okay, It is almost equal to considering the probability of only the previous word. So, considering the probability of current word is previous word is enough to look at uh, previous word like it is almost equal to uh, probability of current word given uh, previous uh, word n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. He says that it is no need to do that. So, that is what Marcos assumption comes from. So, the current event depends mostly on the previous event. Okay, that is assumption. Uh, we have seen this, you know, I talked about bigram everything in the previous uh, slide. Uh, this is a special form of that, you know, if you done a bigram, uh, okay, you have a dictionary of all the words occurring together. Okay. Now, you have to compute uh, like how many words to like, to eat is coming. Just you have to compute the probability. Just once you compute it, you know automatically the probability of which word will come next if you the first word is 2. So, what happens is when you type in a Google, so when you type the first word, it automatically picks up based on the probability of these words occurred uh, in the content. But in Google search is different because based on the current trend, what are the people are searching in the particular contest and what is the latest. Uh, uh, news in the particular uh, uh, the IP address location all this thing is considered. But in general the idea is uh, the finding the probability of current word given the previous word is what used. So, let us look at one simple example to understand that in a more clearly. So, Mark likes to eat meal with his family, Kai likes to sing and eat uh, and uh, eats meal with the friends, Kiran likes music. Okay. What is the probability of currently the word is 2, what is the probability of the next word will be 2. T o likes to 1 times it occurs, 2 times it occurs and 3 times it occurs. Okay. There are 3 times likes and other word occurs. So, in your in biogram dictionary you will have a likes to, likes to and likes music the 3 words okay, something like that. How many words starts with likes? 3 words, but how many words has T o in the second? 2 okay. likes to, likes to 2 times compared to total is 3. So, 2 by 3 the probability is 0 0.66 very simple right. So, what happens now is when you type the word likes, it automatically suggests you the word to, okay, T was what picks up. So, that is a basic, very, very basic uh, form of uh, what word comes next, okay. So, hope you understand this. Uh, so, this is also kind of a probability and the finding the state transition uh, things. But given a huge uh, dictionary, lot of content, English language has a lot of content available in the internet compared to most of other languages. So, identifying this dictionary is not easy. Okay. So, you can go ahead and uh, take all the content in uh, Wikipedia or uh, uh, Google uh, News and create a biogram it is easy because you, you might your system and support. 
trigram is possible, but uh, uh, 4 gram uh, sometimes is needed, 4 gram also needed because I mean that might give a better uh, nest word. Uh, it is not easy, this it needs a lot of computational power, but uh, Google already did it, actually they did a 4 gram uh, database and they have it with them. Um, but actually marker assumption says it is not required, you just use the pi gram is enough, okay. Okay, let us look at the other concept. Uh, how similar uh, is two words or sentence is the next concept. So, uh, let us see there are two sentences, uh, two words, let us talk with the sent words, okay. Analytics and these are the words. How similar these words given to this particular thing? So, the similarity is computed by uh, minimum edit distance, okay. Uh, so, how much uh, minimum edits you have to do to get this particular word to this word. So, anali, analysis uh, almost same T I C S uh, is yes. So, T should be uh, replaced with yes and uh, C should be inserted, right. So, the two, two edits you have to do. So, this is a two edits. Latex, the three edits is needed. Uh, analytics, there is one edit is needed, okay. Let us see. How do you find this? That is a simple rule uh, that is called you have to apply operators, operators like insert, delete, substitute and uh, and that is how the, uh, the similarity is identified. Insert, delete, substitute. Let us look at the example again. So, here Anali, uh, I am inserting this word, uh, I am replacing this word, substituting yes with a T, okay, that is called substitute and I am inserting the word C. So, I did one substitute, one insert. So, there are two operations needed. So, two minimum edit distance. Uh, here, lytics is there. So, I might need to insert uh, three words. So, insert three actions. And here, only one word is missing. So, I am inserting only one word. But how easy or how tough to identify this is not easy, you know. It is like I need to understand uh, lytics is actually occurring in the last uh, like uh, six words uh, not in the first uh, three words or something like that. So, which means uh, there should be a big matrix and comparing each and everything where it is matching. Um, it is it's kind of uh, it looks complex, but if you have proper uh, algorithm it is not that much complex, it is easy to do it. So, that is how the minimum edit distance is computed. So, how similar two words? It is basically based on um, the missing words all this. This is very, very useful in bioinformatics. Um, there are a lot of uh, work on this particular exactly using the minimum edit distance. A lot of work has been uh, uh, going on and there is innovation happened in that field. Okay, If you are interested, go and check minimum edit distance and bioinformatics, you might find the answer. So, have you seen this application? Okay, Have you ever seen this application? If yes, where? Think of it. Uh, again, in Google search, you can type anything, it actually picks up the right word and shows up. It also depends not just the minimum edit distance, also the current uh, trend in the particular location area. But in general, if you type the word, it, it automatically corrects the uh, sentence. But even in PowerPoint, I am using PowerPoint, uh, it will show the uh, wrong sentence in the red color underlined, right? That is exactly right. So, in a word uh, corrections in PowerPoint, uh, this has been used. So, you have seen this everywhere. Uh, okay, these are the basic uh, concepts I want you to understand in uh, NLP. Why I am talking about these concepts? I want to, you to uh, use these concepts in order to create a, um, some automated grading system in a next, uh, next video. Thank you.